Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God, back with you with the next video in my series reading The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn as read by Lord Naren White. Without further ado, returning to The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. When it was dark, I sat by my camps, fire smoking and feeling pretty well satisfied, but by and by it got sort of lonesome, and so I went and sat on the bank and listened to the current swashing along and counted the stars and drift logs and rafts that come down, and then went to bed. There ain't no better way to put in time when you are lonesome, so can't say so. So you, you soon get over it. And so for three days and nights, no difference, just the same thing. Well, the next day I went exploring around down through the island. I was boss of it. It all belonged to me, so to say and I wanted to know all about it. But mainly, I wanted to put in the time. I found plenty of strawberries, ripe and prime, and green summer grapes and green raspberries and the green blackberries was just beginning to show. They would all come handy by and by, I judged. Well, I went fooling along in the deep woods till I judged. I weren't far from the foot of the island. I had my gun along, but I hadn't shot nothing. It was for protection, though I would kill some game nigh home. Thought I would kill some game nigh home. About this time, I mighty near stepped on a good-sized snake, and it went sliding through the grass and flowers, and I after it, trying to get a shot at it. I clipped along, and all of a sudden, I bounded right to the ashes of a campfire that was still smoking. My heart jumped up amongst my lungs. I never waited for it to look further but uncocked my gun and went sneaking back on my tiptoes as fast as ever I could. Every now and then I stopped a second amongst the thick leaves and listened, but my breath came so hard I couldn't hear nothing else. I slunk a long piece further, then listened again and so on and so on. If I see a stump, I took it for a man. If I trod on a stick and broke it, it made me feel like a person had cut one of my breaths in two. And I only got half and the short half, too. When I got to camp, I weren't feeling very brash. There weren't much sand in my craw. But I says, this ain't no time to be fooling around. So I got all my traps into my canoe again, so as to have them out of sight. And I put out the fire and scattered the ashes around to look like an old last year's camp. And then clumb to a, clumb a tree. I reckon I was in the tree two hours, but I didn't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I only thought I heard and seen as much as a thousand things. Well, I couldn't stay up there forever, so at last so at last I got down. But I kept in the thick woods and on the lookout all the time. And all I could get to eat was berries and what was left from over breck from left over from breakfast. By the time it was night I was pretty hungry. So when it was good and dark I slid out from shore before moonrise and paddled over to the Illinois bank, about a quarter of a mile. I went out in the woods and cooked a supper, and I had made my mind made up my mind. I would stay there all night when I hear a plunkety plunk, plunkety plunk, and says to myself, horse is coming, and next I hear people's voices. I got everything into the canoe as quick as I could, and then went creeping through the woods to see what I could find out. I hadn't got far when I hear a man say, we better camp here if we can find a good place. The horses is about beat out. Let's look around. I didn't wait, but shoved out and paddled away easy. I tied up in the old place and reckoned I would sleep in the canoe. I didn't sleep much. I couldn't somehow, for thinking. And every time I waked up, I thought somebody had me by the neck. So the sleep didn't do me no good. By and by, I says to myself, I can't live this way. I'm going to find out who it is that's here on the island with me. I'll find it out or bust. Well, I felt better right off. So I took my paddle and slid out from the shore just a step or two, and then let the canoe drop along down amongst the shadows. The moon was shining, and the outside of the shadows had made it most as light as day. I poked along well on to, the, to an hour, everything still as rocks and sound asleep. Well, by this time I was most down to the foot of the island. A little ripply, cool breeze begun to blow, and that was as good as saying the night was about done. 
I give her a turn with the paddle, and brung her nose to shore. Then I got my gun and slipped out and into the edge of the woods. I sat down there on a log and looked out through the leaves. I see the moon go off watch and the darkness begin to blanket the river. But in a little while I see a pale streak over the treetops and know the day was coming. So I took my gun and slipped off towards where I had run across that campfire, stopping every minute or two to listen. But I hadn't no luck somehow. I couldn't glimpse to seem to find the place, but by and by was sure enough. I catched a glimpse of fire away through the trees. I went for it, cautious and slow. By and by I was close enough to have the look, to have a look, and there laid a man on the ground. It most gave, gave me the fancy the fantods. He had a blanket around his head, and his head was nearly in the fire. I sat there behind a clump of bushes in about six foot of him, and kept my eyes on him steady. It was getting grey daylight now. Pretty soon he gapped and stretched himself and hove off the blanket. And it was Miss Miss Watson's Jim. I bet I was glad to see him. I says, Hello, Jim. And skipped out. He bounced and stared at me wild. Then he dropped down on his knees and puts his hands together and says, Don't hurt me, don't. I ain't never done no harm to a ghost. I always liked dead people and done all I could for them. You go and get in the river again, where you belongs, and don't do nothing to old Jim. That is awful's your friend. That is always your friend. Well, I weren't long making him understand I weren't dead. I was ever so glad to see Jim. I weren't lonesome now. I told him I weren't afraid of him telling the people where I was. I talked along, but he only sat there and looked at me, never said nothing. Then I says, it's good daylight. Let's get breakfast. Make up your campfire good. What's the use in making, or, or what's the use of making up the campfire to cook strawberries in such truck? But you got a gun, ain't you? Then we can get something better than strawberries. Strawberries in such truck, I says. Is that what you live on? I couldn't get nothing else, he says. Why? How long you been on the island, Jim? I come here the night are you killed. What? All that time? Yes, indeedy. And you ain't had nothing but that kind of rubbish to eat? No, sir. Nothing else. Well, you must be Momo starved, ain't you? I reckon I could eat a horse. I think I could. How long you been on the island? Since the night I got killed. No way. What has you lived on? But you got a gun. Oh, excuse me. How long you been on the island? I uh, need to double check the order of the voices here. Okay. Okay. This is how he, he has written it a little different here. Since then, how long you been on the island? Since the night I got, since, since the night I got killed. No way. What is you lived on? But you got a gun. Oh, yes. You got a gun. That's good. Now you kill someone here and I'll make up the fire. So we went over to where the canoe was. And while he built a fire in a grassy open place amongst the trees, I fetched meal and bacon and coffee and coffee pot and frying pan and sugar and tin cups. And the black was set back considerable, because he reckoned it was all done with witchcraft. I catched a good big catfish, too, and Jim cleaned him with the, his knife and fried him. When breakfast was ready, we lolled on the grass and eat it smoking hot. Jim laid it with him, laid it in with him, all his might, for he was most about starved. Then, when he had got pretty well stuffed, we laid off and lazied. By and by, Jim says, But looky here, Huck. Who was it that you's killed in the shanty if it weren't you? Then I told him the whole thing, and he said it was smart. He said Tom Sawyer couldn't get no better plan than what I had. Then I says, How do you come to be here, Jim? And how'd you get here? He looked pretty uneasy and didn't say nothing for a minute. Then he says, We'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, 
comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.